Welcome to the Evolution Learning Show, a podcast focused on deep and real conversations with everyday students and the road towards independence. We all want to live a life with a purpose, not just any life, but our own life. And here's your host, co-founder of Evolution Learning, Sam Kwong. So we're going live in three, two, one. Caitlin, super, super excited to have you on this episode today. Uh, We met, what year was it? A year and a half ago, was it? I think so, yeah. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) it felt like two years. I don't know, COVID kind of turns years into dog years. (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) I can't keep track of time anymore. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think anyone's keeping track of time anymore. It's so hard to look past 30 days. Honestly, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and so, yeah, no, I... I'm I'm super excited for a couple of reasons. One, as an alumni of Aberhart, I know that you recently just graduated there. So first and foremost, congratulations. Thank Second you. reason is I just feel like your high school experience, um, and obviously not to undermine mine, but I feel like you did quite a bit. But before we get into that, I just wanted to get to know you a little bit better and even for our listeners. So walk me through who is the real Caitlin Fong, you know, growing up, what was life like, interests, hobbies, family? Um, I'll pass the mic to you. All right. Um, Hi, I'm Caitlin. (laughs) For everyone who doesn't know me, I grew up with my mom, my dad, my two brothers, my two younger brothers. That was fun. Um, (laughs) And my grandma and my dog. Um, I've lived in Calgary, Alberta my whole life. Um, but last year I went on a 10 week exchange program to Spain. That's the one time I've lived elsewhere. Um, hobbies, I enjoy sports. I grew up playing softball, volleyball, you know, skied, snowboarded, all those things. Um, and I also have a passion for, for making videos. Um, I have a YouTube channel, (laughs) so that's pretty fun and exciting. And, um, yeah. That's Dude, me. <laughs> let, what what is the YouTube channel? I'm gonna write this down. I my need to follow. Channel, it's just my name, Caitlin Fong. Awesome, awesome. So I'll definitely uh, chime in on that. And what and what is the YouTube channel, if you don't mind me asking? Um, it's just I do, I do weird things. I <laughs> I make vlogs. Um, I just do challenges with my friends, things like that. It's it's all over the place, but it's a good time, you know. <laughs> I, I yeah no, but I love how you're having fun with it and you're doing so much. And you know to go back. Um, a little. So let's start, you know, so Caitlin growing up in elementary and junior high, right? Let's start there. Okay. So when you're growing up, you're born and raised in Calgary, you had two younger brothers and (laughs) Caitlin, I have three brothers. Okay. So (laughs) (laughs) I I always ask my, I always ask my mom, I'm like, if you have one, that's okay too. Okay. Right. But like, (laughs) what, like four, seriously. (laughs) And and so what, what was that like? Was, you know, was it, stressful at home was it you know bittersweet what what was that like living with you know two brothers and obviously a packed family um when I was younger the dynamic is a lot different now but when I was younger my two brothers would always play together um because they had similar interests and so I had a lot of time to myself and Mm -hmm. so I think it made me more independent I guess just because I did spend quite a bit of time alone um but honestly, I mean, people always think that having younger brothers would be the worst. Uh, I really like it. <laughs> you know, uh, they're fun. They keep life interesting. And they're, yeah, they're cool. I like them. <laughs> no, I, I only ask this because, Caitlin, I've always wanted an older sister, you know. And oh, really? <laughs> it's, it, it, it's weird. Like, here's the thing. I think older sisters, they're there to, again, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I feel like they're there to protect you in a, in a, in a way or another. Or I... I find that females mature a little bit faster than Almost males. Almost guide you. Yeah. <laughs> and they're there like, no, don't do that. That's stupid. And they'll <laughs> kind of just tell you. Whereas the brother like would be, at least my older brother, I think back. I mean, we probably got ourselves into a lot of shit when we we're younger. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, you, you say don't play with fire. And it's like, okay, let's play with fire. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> you say, don't do this. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I guess you know sharing that were were you more of the sister where you were helping guide them or were you the other, you know, the sister that picks on people, you know, because there's always that one there too. Don't get me wrong. Um I, I definitely wasn't the um the the good influence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Love that. I, I wouldn't say I picked on them, but uh if they were doing something and I thought it would end up funny, I would just encourage them to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all got in trouble. So yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. No, that no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Because I think th- here's the thing: it's it's bittersweet in certain ways because, and I'm just talking about my experience too. Like having a bigger family, there's often times when I'm like, I don't want to share with you because they can't buy you four of everything, right? <laughs> it's like you. I I knew back then. I don't know. I guess as a guy, you. We, we like to play video games and Game Boys were, you know, the, the next best thing, right? But they're not going to buy you four Game Boys, right? Yeah, and so yeah. we're always fighting for things. And I think it's bittersweet too, but having them around is also, you know, nice yeah. as well. Yeah, I agree. It's also so. just a fight for attention, you know, from your yeah. parents. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, was, what was that like when you're fighting for attention? Was it, you know, were they doing better than you in school? Or were they, did they get more of the attention? Or what was, what was, the, what was that like? Um, when we were younger, you know, grades weren't really in the picture. You know, everything that we did, like accomplishments, weren't really what got us attention. It was just who was the loudest. So we had a very loud household. Um, and I, I would say I usually got the least attention just because my brothers are very loud and they talk a lot and <laughs> I'm not so much that way, but yeah. yeah no you're more you, you you're more soft-spoken and if you, you you won't say something for the sake of just saying something right you're yeah. and that probably comes a lot with you know your maturity as well because as as i noticed so you know going through junior high bigger family then high school right when when you got into there was the transition difficult at all um from junior high to high school mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It wasn't difficult. I actually really liked it. Um, I just liked high school a lot better than junior high because it, there was a lot more freedom, um, you know, just with choosing your classes and choosing your friends even because I was in a bigger school. Um, right. And yeah, the teachers, I mean, they weren't as strict with you just because when you get to high school, it's more your responsibility to do well, <laughs> you know, not right. theirs. So yeah, I really liked it. I didn't really have trouble with the transition. That is awesome. And you you mentioned teachers as well. And so I'm curious, in your perspective, what do you think or who do you think makes a good teacher? Like, what are the aspects or criterias that you think make a really good teacher, you know, as you're as you're in school, during high school or junior high, you know, any grade for that matter? Yeah, um, I think just someone who really, really wants to see you succeed. Um, I know I've had a lot of teachers who it doesn't seem that way. It seems like they're looking for everything that they can find that will not make you succeed. Um, And so I think a good teacher is just someone who's really patient um, and who will help you help each student individually with their individual needs and recognize that people learn differently and they need different, um, you know, strategies to help them learn. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. I mean, I think it, it's safe to talk about this too, because we're both alumni from Aberhart. <laughs> and from the teachers that are still there, um, I just remember actually quite a few off the top of my head. So, you know, Miss Farquhar and Miss Lloyd and Mr. Peterson, when I was yeah. in, so I was like over 200 pounds when I was in high school. Okay. okay interesting. And they would, I, I don't know if you guys still have the beep test, right? But we had that or we had to run laps. And Miss Lloyd, I was not a fan of her at first. She would be like, get up and run. Yeah. Like, let's go, you know? And <laughs> yeah. she, her and Farquhar like whipped me into shape. But I'm also, you know, at the time I was like, why are you getting me to move? Like, I don't want to move. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and looking back now, I'm just like, wow, they taught me more grit, right? Just being like, hey, if you want your, your health, you got to fight for it. Yeah. Right? And uh, Mr. Peterson always saying, hey, you know what, one of my biggest regrets too, he wanted me to play on the football team. And I was, I was embarrassed, you know, like, you know, when you're overweight, sometimes you're just like, hey, do you think I can really do this? And every, every day when I'm there, uh, whether it's on the treadmill or on the bike, um, he would be like, hey, Sam, come play football, come play football. And I, I look back and I say it's a regret, but I, if I had a second chance, I would definitely go back and do that. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, another teacher, if I don't know if you had a Mr. Marshall for math. Did you ever have him? Have you him know, him. you've heard. I know who it, it is. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's super strict. You come in late yeah. and he's just like, hey, <laughs> repeat after me. Thou shall not come late. 
<laughs> in front of the whole class. Man, I'm I think like, he got me in trouble once and I wasn't even in his class. It was just because I was walking in the hallway while he was there. He was like, yeah. hey, you're going to be late. <laughs> not even my teacher who are you <laughs> who are you and what are you doing and here's the thing he was so strict but when I got into university those are the teachers that I thanked because they almost prime you to be better than what you were yesterday and yeah. so when it came to math it's not like I was a big you know fan of the subject of the class like math honestly to me was okay but it was more like it was more that you can't really connect the dots until after you graduate. And, you know, sometimes that's just kind of how it is, right? You're like, yeah, yeah. oh, that's why you did this. Right? <laughs> and so, yeah. I, th I mean, that's enough about me, though. But your, did you have any favorite teachers of your own at all? Favorite teachers? Wow. Um, I, you probably wouldn't know who this is because she's mm -hmm. new. But mm -hmm. there's this teacher named Miss Jacobson, mm -hmm. and maybe it's just because she was new, but she was very patient, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and she just like she wanted to help everybody, you know, even the kids that I feel like had given up on themselves and their own grades. She would she would help them bring up their grades, um, mm -hmm. however she could, and yeah, she was she was great. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, who else? I don't know, I had a couple other teachers that they weren't as like, you know, kind and soft and whatever, but like you said, sometimes you need that just to guide you and to really get you on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's the same thing, like, if you asked me in the moment, I might have said, no, I don't like them, they're too strict, they're too bossy, they're mean, things like that. But looking back, I'm like, my grade would not be where it was without them, you know, like they, they really... <laughs> <laughs> kept me on track so um there was yeah. one she's a french teacher named madame dunn mm -hmm. she's a lot of people don't particularly like her just because she's very strict but mm -hmm. i like that about her <laughs> yeah. yeah no that's that that's awesome and it's 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 nice to just see the the differences too right between teaching and it the reason why I talked a little bit about that too is because I feel that teachers do so, so much and it's a hard job. Yeah. Like Caitlin, imagine yourself as a teacher right now and you have 30 to 40 kids that are in a classroom. Yeah. And I only say this because Caitlin, I came in, um, you know, representing evolution learning and partnering up with Aberhart to, you know, help students back a year and a half ago, which is where I met you. Mm -hmm. And when I left that class, I was like, oh my God. I'm done for the day. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you yeah. know, like there are so yeah. many questions. There's people asking you things and then you're yeah. just trying to be focused. Right. And then, you know, I guess obviously I've talked into class um, in classrooms even before that, but I find that the energy level that teachers have to carry, especially in high school, because I, I find that high school is a little bit more unique too, because the students that you're working with, are most of the times smarter than you, you know? And when, when I say smarter, it's like, you might treat them like, oh, they're still a teen, right? But in high school, you, and I'm only saying this um, because when I, when I was in high school, just seeing friends and talking to them, I was like, wow, your, your brain is basically developed in a way where you have your own opinions, you have your own thoughts, you know what you like, you know what you don't like, you know what you hate, right? And so that's why I find, you know, teaching in high school, it's a bit more unique because you're really working with adults, younger adults, right? Younger yeah. adolescents. And so, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you also have a lot of, um, you know, high school is very stressful. Most students have a lot of things on their plate that teachers kind of have to carry as well because they're trying to, you know, work around those problems to get their grades up basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a tough job. Yeah, for sure. So I, I guess we, we have to tip our hat to all the teachers that are out there yes. for sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, pivoting here a little, I know that you mentioned this two or three times now, and I'm actually curious. You mentioned grades. And so, you know, starting off, if you're comfortable sharing this too, grades wise, what, what were you like as a student? Averages or, you know, grade wise? Um, it was really all over the place in general. Mm -hmm. I was, I don't mean to like, you know, <laughs> break, yeah. but I, I was pretty naturally intelligent. And so, um, mm -hmm. in grade 10, I did really well. Uh, I probably had 
95% overall, something like that. Um, in grade 11, <laughs> didn't go so well. Basically, I had an off year. Um, I was really stressed. I skipped a lot of class <laughs> and my grades fell a bit, but um, in grade 12, it was my goal to get that back up. So I think I finished with a 93 overall or 94. Wow. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, I know at Evolution Learning, we're not just advisory, but we do tutoring as well. But I feel like you should be tutoring me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that <No>. is awesome. <laughs> So as you as you were, you know, explaining that, I kind of saw it as like, so Caitlin's kind of here and then in grade 11 naturally. And then you just was like, you know what? That's not, that's not me. Let's go there. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so, what <laughs> and so aside, like, there's so much to talk about here, but I think let's dabble into this. So like in grade 10, you were there and you're like, you know what? I just want to focus. Right. And then mm -hmm. you said stress kicked in, right? Grade 11. Yeah. And aside from grade stress, what were some of the other stresses that you think um, affected you or even your peers for that yeah. matter? Because high school is tough. And I'm just curious what, what some of those stress, stresses were. Um, I think a big one is just the typical like boys, girls, you know, love, <laughs> things yeah. like that. There's always a lot of drama, um, even just with your friends, and that is very stressful, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think another one is when people kind of get to that age, like 16, 17, I don't know, that age, they um, they're, they usually have some issues with their parents, just naturally, because they're starting to become more independent, um, and that's always a weird, difficult transition, and so I think that's a big stress as well. Um, and I think just identity, like trying to figure out who you are, who you want to be, what your passions are, um, what you enjoy learning about, things like that. It's all just stressful. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And going through that, like Caitlin, what would your recommendation be for like other high school students that are coming up that are no different than you, right? That are going to face, you know, some of these stresses as well. What are some tips or tricks that, or even uh, things that you went through that you could shed some light on? Um, I think an important thing to note is always to look at the bigger picture um, because there are always so many things in high school that seem like the end of the world and they seem like a huge deal uh, when they're really not. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's really important to learn how to just um, pull yourself out of your current position and look at the bigger picture and look at everything that's led you to where you are now and everything mm -hmm. that will happen in the future um, instead of just stressing over the present moment if that makes sense um and just i would say something i really struggled with in high school especially for grade 10 mm -hmm. was caring too much about what other people thought of me um and that that's the stress you really don't need in your life because it really does not matter so i would say just work on doing what you love being yourself um and th the people that are meant to be around you will naturally come to you Mm -hmm. um if if they are good friends and they help build you up then keep them <laughs> but if they are not good friends let them go you know mm -hmm. like don't don't keep things around you that are not going to help you grow as a person mm. that is that is so well said caitlin i i wish you were around when i was in high school because sometimes <laughs> i needed to hear that because oftentimes when you're not, not here's the thing I keep saying high school but even when you're out of high school right even at my age my parents age people tend to think and worry about other people's judgments and thoughts yeah. when they don't matter at all right and I, I say when they don't matter at all is because they're they're so busy focused on talking in front or behind your back that mm -hmm you start to question you're like what really you have so much time to do other things but instead of focusing yeah. on yourself you're here to undermine me right exactly and so if you can really block out of that noise which is what you're saying and i needed to hear that too when i was in high school it things just are a little bit smoother cuz now you're like hey this is just yeah. me and my own right it's a lot more productive for sure like i know I, I got a lot better throughout the years in high school, but um, even towards the end with my YouTube channel, I was always very insecure about it, and I was too worried about what other people thought of me, so I wouldn't post certain content, I wouldn't make certain videos just because I was embarrassed, basically. 
Um, but then when we, you know, went into quarantine and, you know, got out of school, I was just like, you know what, screw it. I was, <laughs> I'm going to post what I want. And that's when my YouTube channel really started to take off was when I just started being myself and posting what I wanted to. <laughs> Caitlin, I don't even know why I'm sharing this right now. So like, it it's the exact same thing with this podcast right now. I'm not even going to lie, right? Oh, yeah. That, I, I was worried, you know, coming on and, oh, okay, I'll be honest with you. If you look closely, I have like this small little pimple right on my lip. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I don't know why it came to thought. And <laughs> as you, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I, exactly. That is my point. You're so worried what other people are going to say about your pimple yeah. when they are worried about their own zit. They're worried about yeah. their own pimple, you know? That's and so- true, yeah. I think why, why, why I'm sharing that is that sometimes you're kind of just in your own head and like people really don't care about your pimple. Like yeah. they just care about other things. And so getting out of that psyche, thank you. I, it's, it's something I wanted to share where I'm like, I was kind of nervous. I'm like, Hey, should I, should I, you know, do this another day? And I'm like, okay, Sam, grow up here. Right. It's <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so. I do not care about your pimple. It's all good. <laughs> thanks, Caitlin. Well, thanks. Um, so, no, that that is good. And so, I, I one of the things I was thinking about, too, was as you're describing that in high school, at least from what I picked up from that, you were mentioning that aside from just focusing on grades, that alone is stressful you're saying boys and girls, mm -hmm. that is also stressful. There's also, you know, the notion of obviously parents that are looking sometimes over you and with you on like, hey, are you doing the right thing? Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, so much extra noise. I find that high school, there's a lot of noise. But one of the bigger ones is yeah. Yeah. what you mentioned, boys and girls, like relationships, right in there. And I want to talk about that because as I was going through that and in high school, typically, I mean, for some of the early birds, it's in junior high, right? That you start getting yourself yeah. into relationships. And then in high school, most of the times, that's when you start to, you know, feel like, oh, I kind of like you. Do you like me? You know, that aspect. And I guess yeah. what I'm sharing about here is that I want to make the point that sometimes people overlook how stressful that can be and it affects grades. Mm -hmm. And we might not necessarily, at least for me, I never told my parents. And then you get the added stress of them come in and be like, oh, you got 75? Why didn't you get 85? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got a call from your teacher like, hey, you weren't in class. What was going on? And yeah. then I think that's where I started to take a corner. It's like, okay, get out of my life. I'm going to worry about it myself. Because, you know, in high school, you, you just you think you're independent enough that you don't need your parents. Yeah. But really, you still you still do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And so in the relationship part, that's the part that I wanted to mention, which is you can disagree with me, but do you agree that, you know, some of those relationships are tough? And as you're thinking about that, I just wanted to bring up an example and I'll give you this example. So, you know, through a lot of junior high and um, early high school, um, I really liked uh, my friend Jesse and she knows that we're really good friends now. I'm married by the way. And so, you know, that didn't work out, but yeah. you know, I, I just remember that f for some odd reason, I was like, Oh, I'm just going to tell her. Right. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> on the phone, I called her up and I'm like, Hey, Jesse. Uh, and then I just started talking about like random things. Right. And I'm just like, Oh yeah. What about this? What about that? What are we going to do this weekend? And then I'm like, Hey, I think I kind of like you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Guy, guys are the worst for that, right? And then she's like, the worst part is she's like, what? <laughs> and then I'm like, I think I kind of like you, right? Just mumbling it. And she's like, oh, yeah, I like you too. But, but, right? The, and then it's like, okay. And then I, 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 I was still listening to the phone, but I kind of lifted it off. Like, do I even want to hear this? Right. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, but we're such good friends. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, that, that whole thing. Oh, we're such friends good friends. Though. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Caitlin, come on. <laughs> yeah. But you knew. Yeah. I got, I got friend zoned, but at that time it was the first time, like as a guy, right. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I ever, you know, came out to really tell someone like, Hey, you know what? I think I kind of like you. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I first, heard that I was like okay you know what's funny when she told me that I was like okay cool yeah no I want to be friends too and then I hung up 
<laughs> and then yeah. I guess why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this is because it's because of that one event, like I was probably out for like two weeks, right? Three weeks. Like, yes, I see uh -huh. her every day and I pretend like nothing, nothing happened or nothing is there. Mm -hmm. But that two to three weeks, like when you're sitting in class, you, the last thing I'm thinking about is chemistry. Q equals MC yeah. delta T. You know, the last yeah, thing in yeah. math class is I'm not thinking about Pythagorean theorem. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about, oh, shit, why did I say that? Like, if <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that, I wouldn't have to be so awkward. But I guess, you know, I, I, I talked, you know, a lot around that as you're thinking. But, you know, going back to you, you know, to that question, what are your thoughts about relationships in high school? And what do you think is the most tough thing about it? Man, they can be so tough. Um, mm -hmm. The trickiest thing, I, this year, this might be too deep, but I'm, I don't have a problem sharing it. So mm -hmm. this year I got into a sort of relationship that was very, very toxic and borderline abusive, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was so bad even after it ended, just because you get trapped in this little bubble of people and you can't really get away because every day you have to go to school, see the same people. Um, they're all talking about it. Like you just can't really escape at all. And I think that's the hardest part is just that there's no, there's no getting away from it. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I feel like after high school relationships are a lot more private and everyone is not so involved in your business, especially people who aren't really your friends. They're not as like, oh, who's dating who? What's going on? You know, things like that. Yeah. Um, and so it's better. But in high school, you know, everyone talks, everyone likes rumors, gossip, things like that. Um, and I think they don't realize how much stress that can put on the, on the person who's being talked about. So yeah, it's definitely tricky. Um, even just beyond the relationships themselves, the trickiest part, in my opinion, is just like all the, the gossip and the aftermath that follows them. And and what's your recommendation for that? Like for toxic relationships and people that you know are toxic, right? Because I think growing up, you start to see how your family treats you and like your dad and your parents. And then you start to see some of these yeah. other guys and girls for that matter, right? That are treating you a little bit more, you know, call it verbally. And when I, when I heard you said abusive, it's like, regardless if it's verbal or physical, I'm so saddened that you went through that but I feel like you got over that hump which I congratulate you for but what are because a lot more people are going to go through this unless there's a remediation right or the, unless yeah. there's a fix to it and, and in your eyes and your perspective Caitlin what is something that you would suggest if someone is to find themselves in a similar situation to you oh, um first of all it's important to know what to look out for um, I think the biggest thing to note, there's a lot of different red flags, but the biggest thing to take note of is um, the way you are around that person, the way you act, the way you think, uh, is, is it normal for you? Because I know when I was in that relationship, I, I wasn't acting like myself. Um, I, you know, I wasn't being a good friend. I wasn't being a good daughter. I wasn't being a good student like I, I just wasn't doing things that I would normally do um and I think that's the biggest thing to look out for and you know every time I hung out with the person afterwards I would I wouldn't feel empowered I wouldn't feel happy I wouldn't feel like I got anything out of it I would just either feel angry sad <laughs> etc mm -hmm. and so that's the first thing is just to know what to recognize as a toxic relationship um and then just to the thing about getting out of the relationship is that it's very, very scary um, because you feel like you need them. But the longer you stay in, <laughs> the worse it'll be. Um, and so I would say, again, it's important to look at the bigger picture just because usually when you're in these toxic relationships, they're very manipulative. Um, and they'll have you thinking that you need them because that's what they want you to think, right? So it's important, like looking back, if I would have stepped back and look at, looked at all the other people I had around me that loved me, that cared about me, that wanted to see me succeed, 
things would have been so different, but I was just so focused on the one person. I was like, I need this person. This is the only person that understands me. It's the only person that, you know, cares about me. That's what I thought. And that's why I felt like I needed to stay. Um, but I really just should have taken a step back and been like, okay, who's been here for me my whole life? Who's been here for me, you know, for years? Who's going to be there for me in the future when I do all these things that I want to do with my life, right? Um, there's just, there's always so many more people that are there for you than you think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Caitlin, the, it's, it's, it's so great that you're able to look past that and be like, yeah, that trash is behind me. And when I say trash, I'm not talking about the person, by the way, I'm talking about that specific event, right? Or yeah. that series of, you know, that sequence of daily events that you have to go through because now you took that and you kind of crumpled it up like the homework that you don't want to do. And you're just like, okay, yeah. screw you. It's yeah. in the back now. And you don't forget about it, right? But you're almost like, you know what? That's kind of, it, it, it almost shapes you to being the pinnacle of who you are today. Yeah. And so exactly. That, exactly. That, that's something that, you know, and thank, thank you, first and foremost, thank you for sharing something like that because so many people go through toxic relationships. And I think in tandem with what you just said there, I think when it comes to toxic people in general, they need to, toxic people need to actually look at themselves and be like, okay, am I making the world a better place or am I sending out dark energy because of my insecurities? And when I say insecurities, it's the fact that I'm giving the guy or the girl that is verbally or physically abusive the benefit of the doubt that there is something bothering them. And that typically the thing that is bothering them is the fact that they're scared to lose something, which is probably for the first time, right? And they're losing yeah. something that means they're losing something that means so much to them. Obviously, a gem like you, Caitlin. And so yeah. being being that their insecurities are bigger than what they can handle, they yeah. start I, I say this because with most guys that I grew up with in high school and even myself, right? I'm not going to talk about other people, but myself, when those emotions come in for the first time, you don't know what to do yeah. and you just act on it. It's like, oh, she's going to break up with me. I'm going to call her 10 times. I'm mm -hmm. going to show up at her house. I'm not saying that they did that, but those are typically the things that happen with yeah. guys, right? Where they're like, oh, you can't break up with me. Like, what are my friends going to think? Like, what am I going to think? What are my parents? Like, you start worrying about all these things that don't matter when in the end, you have a good friend at the end of the day that people should yeah. know. And if you do anything else that is A, creepy, <laughs> B, <laughs> abusive, or C, you just can't get a handle of yourself, you're going to end up losing a friend as well. You yeah. know? And so I think when it comes to toxic people, they really just have to look at themselves in the mirror and be like, hey, you know what? Face it. And how can I be better? Right? Mm -hmm. then, yeah, I agree. Then they I, think, um, I think in high school, one of the biggest issues is that in every situation, people feel that there is one victim and one, I don't know what to call them, bad guy or yeah. something like that. Um, and I don't necessarily agree with that. Like, like you were saying, toxic people... I don't usually use that term for anyone just because I think everyone has the potential to change. And um, a lot of toxic relationships, they're not, they're, they're not, they don't just go one way, you know? Um, like obviously in my situation, I never wanted it to seem like I was just the victim um, because I did recognize that there were ways that I both unintentionally and intentionally hurt the other person. And they obviously did the same to me. And it's just sometimes relationships aren't aren't beneficial for either of you, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's toxic. Just the way just the way the dynamic is, the way you are as people, it doesn't mesh, it doesn't work, it doesn't build either of you up. Um, and it's important to recognize that. So um mm -hmm. yeah, I would say those relationships, it can be hard because sometimes you do, you know, love the person and care about the person, but the relationship just isn't like I said, beneficial. It isn't building mm -hmm. anyone up. And um, you, you got to get out of it. Yeah. And, and so I, I forgot to ask this at the beginning, but was this grade 11 or grade 12 or near the end of grade 12 or? That this whole situation happened. Yeah. Was um, the beginning of grade 12 and then it 
pretty much followed me until the end of grade 12. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and so it, it basically came, you know, back after, would you say that? Cause your exchange was in grade 11, correct? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so that probably added another level of perspective. And so pivoting away from mm-hmm. that for a little, right? Mm-hmm. You're coming into grade 10, you know, you're doing very really well in grade 11. You're like, Hey, you know what? I, you know, maybe it was social life, maybe for a variety of reasons, right? Um, you know, the stress came on. But then this exchange program, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So this exchange program that you went on, it's so, I, I say it's amazing because you might feel like, oh, Sam, I went on an exchange program, like, cool. You're like, yeah. what do you do? Like, why, why are you praising about this? I'm praising about it because typically when you're 16 or 17, you don't think about leaving your friends, your family, your everything that you have, because you were born and raised in Calgary, correct? And so how did this all come about? First of all, I want to ask, how did you apply and how does one even get admitted to being on an exchange program in the CBE? Okay, so I was in Spanish 10, the option. I was never in Spanish immersion or anything like that, but I was in the option class and um, my teacher, she was um associated with an exchange program it wasn't through the school but i heard about it through the school because i heard about it through my teacher if that makes sense yeah. um so she came to me and she just said hey you're one of my top students um i'd like to show you about this exchange program in spain yeah. um and so i went to this presentation i heard about it and i'm just a very um I like to take opportunities, you know, (laughs) I, I rarely let them go. (laughs) And so I kind of just went for it. I was like, yeah, I'll go to Spain. Like (laughs) I want to go to Spain. That sounds awesome. Um, obviously like the fear came in, honestly, not not until like a month before I left. (laughs) That's when I started to get scared. Um, just, I think my biggest fear was of being replaced, I guess. And like you said, losing everything I had in Canada that was comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like I had a very familiar group of friends, a very comfortable life with my family. Um, You know, my, I don't know, (laughs) just my friends. And I was scared to leave that. And I think that's just a natural human thing is to be scared of change. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, once I did it, once I stepped out of my comfort zone, that's when you really grow as a person is when you let yourself be uncomfortable and let mm-hmm. yourself be in unfamiliar situations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Wow. And that exchange program, it's its just so admirable to see that you took this opportunity. And I, I, I say that because oftentimes you might be like, okay, yeah, someone told me to go on exchange, but could you really press the button and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. And so a month in, you were like, okay, you signed up, you got approved. I mean, were your parents a fan of it as well? Did they support you there? Or were they like, what, you're going to Spain? Because if I, I'm just thinking out loud, right? If I was a parent, I'm like, no, I, don't, I don't want you to go there. What's going to happen to you? And then the, super, the protective parent comes in. But what was that experience like for you? Um, you know, I've always been pretty adventurous and my mom is the same way. And so she was obviously nervous, but I think she was more excited for me just because, um, I think it was something that she would have loved to have done when she was 16. And she just knew that I love traveling. I love new experiences. So she knew I was going to have a great time. Mm -hmm. Um, My dad, I don't know. I think he was trying to keep his opinions to himself. (laughs) (laughs) Like most guys, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He just Mm -hmm. kept quiet a bit. (laughs) No, but it's almost like he... He keeps quiet because he knows that the harder thing would be to say something and hold you back from spreading your wings and flying exactly, and soaring there. And so I guess now that you're back from this exchange program that didn't happen all that long ago, would you recommend, you know, exchange programs to other students or people in general? Uh, Yes, definitely. Um, Obviously, it depends Mm -hmm. on the type of person you are. Mm hmm. But I think it can be super beneficial for most people. It really offers a new perspective on the world. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just a great experience, especially for high school students, uh, to start, you know, learning how to be independent and learning how to 
sort of, obviously I wasn't living on my own, but I was living away from my parents. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I definitely think I grew a lot from that experience and I recommend it to basically anyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I love that you said that too, because um, when, when I said you said that too, it's the word independent. Um, as you, you already know, um, at Evolution Learning, we're really all about students carving out their own direction so that they can find purpose and passion in something that they truly want to do. You know, not what your mom wants you to do, not your great uncle, not your grandma, not your ex-boyfriend, you know, like something that you, Caitlin or Sam, truly connects with. Like, you know what, I can see myself and, you know, doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Point in case is, you know, you found that YouTube was something that you want to have fun in. Who cares about the people being like, oh, you want to be a YouTube star for the rest of your life? It's like, no, it's not for the rest of my life. I just like doing this now, yeah. right? <laughs> and yeah. you don't even need to explain to them, right? Exactly. But but I, I guess, you know, you're going through, you know, this whole, you know, experience. And I think with evolution learning, why we really connect with that too is because it's hard in high school. Everyone's going to ask you, what do you want to be for the rest of your life? But it's inevitable that no matter how young or how old you are, even at the dinner table, people are like, oh, what are you going to be when you grow up? Right. And so, you know, talking a bit about that, I know it's a stressful question. It, it's ironic. I start by saying that. And then my next question that I actually want to ask is now that you're graduated, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right, Kayla? Like now that you're graduated, you're finished grade 12, you threw a lot of those successes forward to your day you know to your life now because I look at it this way not only did you finish with like an average give or take of 93 over you know the most difficult time right like I I'd say for me like I'd, I'd, I'd be happy if I had 80 percent you know <laughs> like going through but you were able to power through that as well in addition with going on exchange in addition with having a social life and so going through all of that, what is next for Caitlin? So um, I am taking a gap here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I decided to do that pretty early on um, for a number of reasons. But overall, I just think, I think it could be really beneficial to take a gap year, just to figure out exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm, I'm really glad I decided to do that because of all the online school and everything. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to do online university. That does not sound fun to me. So <laughs> um, originally I had quite a few plans. I was planning to go to Australia and get my working visa there for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then just do some traveling just for fun, just places that I've always wanted to go to. Um, that might not happen anymore because mm -hmm. of travel bans. Mm -hmm. But um, I still think it's going to be a really good year. I'm mainly going to be focusing on um, on my own business opportunities. I obviously have YouTube, and then my brother and I actually have been working on a business, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's fun. Um, and yeah, that I I don't plan to never go to university. I'd like to go eventually, um, and I would like to go into biochemistry just mm -hmm. because that's what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. um, biomedicine, if I can't get in, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like you said, it's, I think it's important to just go with what sparks your curiosity and mm -hmm. what you enjoy doing instead of focusing on the long-term picture of like, okay, what am I going to do for the rest of my life every single day for the rest of my life? You know, like, if you if you enjoy art, go study art and see what happens. You know what I mean? Like it's just mm -hmm. go with the flow. You know? Yeah. No, for sure. And Caitlin, I've been talking to you almost for an hour here, and what this theme that I keep getting is that you're someone that doesn't conform to the social norm. Like you have your own thought and feelings about a certain thing, and it's almost like you know that that's you, and you stay mm -hmm. true to it. And I, I really want to also connect you with a person too, uh, which is Matthew Bittman, because as you're talking to that about that story, um, so he, I, I met him five years ago, so it would have been in grade 10, obviously, he's in his younger 20s now. And he was someone, you know, similar to you, obviously, in different ways. But he was similar in the sense where he's like, you know what, there's so many, many pressures of me 
choosing what I want to do, quote unquote, after high school. But he was like, you know what, I want to take a gap year. And I think the difference is that taking a gap year doesn't mean you do nothing, right? Yeah. To some people, when they, when they think that, oh, what am I going to do after high school? It's a big pressured question. As anyone gets, they're like, I don't know. They say, hey, I want to take a gap year. But in mm-hmm. your and Matt's case, your gap year was filled with things. For example, mm-hmm. your business, your work, your hobbies, your interests, and you learning more about yourself. In Matt's case, why I wanted to connect you with him was that he went through, and it's Australia as well. So when you said Australia, I was like, light bulb, <laughs> all right? So he went through the whole visa process. He yeah. went through the fact that he's like, mom, dad, he's, he didn't spend a you know, dime and their parents might have helped them out maybe with a ticket or here or there, but not a whole lot, to be honest. Yeah. And the independence that he built through it was that he found a job himself. You know, obviously, we helped here and there uh, with, you know, reviewing things like, you know, the resume, the cover letter, just to help him out, right, to ensure that things were there. But he did the heavy lifting all himself and found himself a job. He worked for that whole summer plus more, saved up the amount of money that he needed. And then I was like, back then, he was like 17 or 18, no different than yourself, right? He, he went through the whole visa process. I was like, what? <laughs> how, like, how does that even work? I didn't, I didn't even know that you needed a visa to go to Australia, you know, but that's why I never judge by age. Because when I talk to high school students and any, you know, people for that matter, you don't even need to figure out their age. When you have a conversation with them, they can hold a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. And so I guess, no, I definitely want to connect you, you know, with Matt too, because he went through that whole process. He worked there as well. And some of the work um, we were just going through. And I think, um, you you know, you would find it interesting if you ever decide uh, that the travel bans are down and that you want to go to Australia again. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, like you said, it's gap years. They can be super productive. Um, And I... I just think like one sec let me think about this <laughs> no worries take your time I figure out how to word this um okay I think 2020 especially has shown us that things can change so fast like even for me I had these plans to go traveling and and that changed um and I think that you can take that as an important lesson for for life in general and that's why I think it's so important to do what you love and not what will get you like the most money at the end of the day, the most status, you know, things like that, because you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Life could change at any second. Life could end at any second, to be honest. And it's just, it's just like, you want to spend the time you have doing what you love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's Caitlin, everything you, th- it, it's funny, everything you say, you're teaching me so much, you know, there's this <laughs> aspect of like, it's that, that's why I appreciate talking, you know, to people like you as well, because as we're going through, it's like, I'm learning so much here as well. And you almost made me think about why I do what I do now. And so to give you some background, I think you uh, might have known this when we came into the classroom, and I gave my intro, like, I went into doing a four year accounting program to make my parents happy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I was just like, why did I do that? Don't get me wrong. Like, with anything I do, I feel like I take away from it, right? So, you know, I've worked um, serving jobs. I've been a part-time janitor before. I've been a part-time dishwasher before. I think any job offers me skills and insight mm-hmm. that helps me grow. But getting back to that story about my, you know, four-year program, sometimes I'm like, you know, I did that to make them happy. But the true me was, I like education, you know, the industry yeah. where it's like, I, I feel as if education is a form of health innovation, meaning that it's the way that we can all grow to become better, whether you're learning, you know, your core math and your science subjects, right? And you're learning a certain skill set, or you're learning about how to connect or communicate with people. And when I say education, it's not just writing exams, right? I just want to get that out the door. Like education is literally taking a skill that you've learned and transcribing it into value for other people. Mm -hmm. And so as you were talking about that, I was like, you know, even with, you know, the podcast that we're doing and education and my mom sometimes will say, Sam, you were making so much more money before, you know, than doing, doing this. Why are you doing this? And I'm like, yeah, but I told her this too. I was like, when COVID hit, I was like, if something 
happens and you know it doesn't even have to be COVID if something happens and it drops on my head and I fall over it's yeah. like I would have no regret yeah. you know and 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 I think that's sometimes hard to don't get me wrong it's like yes follow your passion but you still have to put food on the table right mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tricky to balance. <laughs> yeah, and so that's that's something that you you really helped me kind of reflect on. So thank you for that. And so, I guess to wrap up here, I have you know one final question for you, Caitlin. Many people have their own definitions, and you may as well. So when it comes to the word success, you know what makes someone successful? Yourself, anyone in general? What would your definition of success be? Hmm. I would say success is being proud of who you are. And that's not based on whether or not your parents are proud, whether or not your friends are proud. It's just being proud of what you've done, the person you are, the way you treat other people, um, you know, your accomplishments, all that stuff. And just, it's like whether, whether you have the approval of your parents or not, whether you have a lot of friends or not, whether you have, um, you know, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever. It's just like, if you're by yourself, are you proud of who you are? That's what I think of success. <laughs> Caitlin, that was an awesome answer. And even above and beyond that, this was an awesome, awesome episode. I felt like I, I had a lot of fun connecting with you. And it, I feel like you've not only helped me, but like a lot of gems that you put in here, a lot of the tips and tricks that you know, you put in here. Thank you so much for sharing that. This was awesome. I had a lot of fun, Caitlin. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me. No, anytime. And hey, you know, we're always around. If you, your network, anyone ever needs anything, but I, I, I think it's going to be the other right way around. I'm, I'm definitely going to need some consultation from you <laughs> <laughs> here and there. Thank you so much, Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin Fong, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you for tuning in to another episode on the Evolution Learning Show. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and share this episode with your network or subscribe to the channel. You can also find out more about us on www.evolutionlearning.org. See you in our next episode and until next time, take care of yourself and each other.